Hey everyone. In this video, I want to go through a couple quick examples of unit conversions. Because whenever we're dealing with a physical equation and I'm combining two values, I'm adding or subtracting two values, I need to make sure that they have the same units. So if I have something like uh, five kilometers plus eight miles, then the only way I can add them together is if I convert one of these quantities so that the units on both of those quantities match up. Also, when we're dealing with different kinds of physical equations, most of the time those physical equations assume certain kinds of units. And if the original quantities that were given aren't in the right units, well, we have to make those conversions. So as a quick, uh, some general helpful information, it's really helpful to know the SI prefixes, or at least some of the SI prefixes for metric quantities. So for example, in the metric system, kilo literally just means 1,000. So a kilometer is literally 1,000 meters. A kilogram is literally just 1,000 grams. Similar things for uh, centa. Centa just means one one hundredth. So a centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. So there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. Or milla is one one thousandth. So a millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter. A milligram is one one thousandth of a gram. And again, there's lots of other SI prefixes, things like micro or nano getting smaller and smaller. Going the other direction, you go to mega is one million, giga is one billion. But again, these are some of the ones that are helpful to know uh, in a lot of situations. And here are some other common unit conversions for certain types of quantities, for converting certain distances, converting certain masses, volumes, force. Uh, again, time is on here as well. In case everyone, anyone forgets, there's 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. So let's say we actually want to do one of these unit conversions. Let's say I want to convert 8 miles to kilometers. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of set up this unit conversion. I like thinking of it as multiplying by 1. But I'm going to make that 1 look kind of a little weird. So for example, if I have one of these equivalent sets of quantities. So 1.61 kilometers equals one mile. I can set up a conversion factor where I'm going to put one of these quantities in the numerator of my conversion factor and one in the denominator. It could be 1.61 kilometers over one mile or one mile over 1.61 kilometers. And since we know those two quantities are equal to each other, if I have anything divided by itself, well, ultimately that would just have the value of one. And multiplying something by one doesn't actually change what that quantity is representing. When we're setting up these conversion factors, our goal in figuring out which quantity do we want to put in the numerator, which quantity do we want to put in the denominator of this conversion factor, is we want to set it up so that the units that we don't want cancel out, and hopefully that will leave us with the units that we do want. Okay. So for example, in this case, if I've got eight miles and I want to convert that to kilometers, to get the miles to cancel out with this quantity, we're going to put one mile in the denominator and then we'll put 1.61 kilometers in the numerator. And when we do that, well, the miles cancel out. And the way that we uh, evaluate this is multiply out everything that's in the numerator of this set of operations and divide everything that's in the denominator. So we'd have 8 times 1.61 and then divided by 1. So dividing by 1 doesn't really do anything. In this case we get 12.88 kilometers. Okay. So I could write this 5 kilometers plus 8 miles is equal to 5 kilometers plus 12.88 kilometers, which equals uh, 17.88 kilometers. So again, that's a fairly straightforward unit conversion. And again, when we're introducing these conversion factors, the goal is we want the units that we don't want to cancel out. The units that we're trying to get rid of, we want those units to cancel out in our conversion factors. And that should leave us with the units that we do want. 
So let's look at a few examples of unit conversions that require a few more steps, a few more conversion factors. And let's start with this one. Let's say a car is traveling at 55 miles per hour. So we're gonna start with the 55 miles per hour. And again, when we start introducing these conversion factors, we're gonna need multiple conversion factors. We're always trying to set this up so that the units that we are trying to get rid of show up in both the numerator and the denominator of the set of terms that we're multiplying together. So there's a number of different ways to do this. You don't have to do this in a particular order, but let's start by converting these miles to kilometers. So we know that one mile is equal to 1.61 kilometers. We're starting with miles in the numerator of this fraction. So to cancel it out, we need the miles to show up in the denominator. So one mile is 1.61 kilometers. Okay. And notice that the miles will now cancel out. And if we stopped here, we'd be left with kilometers per hour. But we want to get all the way to meters per second. So let's introduce another conversion factor. And we're going to switch those kilometers to meters. Well, kilo means 1,000. So there's 1,000 meters in each kilometer. And if we're trying to get rid of kilometers, and right now it's in the numerator, we want the one kilometer to be in the denominator. And one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Okay. Right now, if we were to stop, we'd be left with meters per hour. But let's convert those hours as well. We know that they are 60 minutes in an hour. But right now, the hours is in the denominator of the fraction. So if I want to cancel it out, in my conversion factor, I need to put hours up top. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. And we can convert those minutes to seconds by saying, well, one minute is 60 seconds. And if minutes is in the denominator and we want to cancel it out, we need that minutes to be in the numerator. So one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And if we look at these terms and how these terms can cancel out, uh, the miles cancel out top and bottom, kilometers cancel top and bottom, hours cancel, minutes cancel. And if we look at what we're left with, we're left with meters divided by seconds. The way that you'd evaluate this is let's multiply everything that's in the numerator. So we've got 55 times 1.61 times 1,000 and then divide by everything that's in the denominator. So divide by 60 equals that, divide by 60 again, and I got 24.6. So 24.6 meters per second. So again, this is gonna be our method for doing unit conversions in general, introducing these conversion factors in such a way that the units we're trying to get rid of cancel out in top and bottom in each of these conversion factors that we introduce. Okay. Let's look at another one. Let's say a piece of paper measures eight and a half by 11 inches. And I wanna figure out what is the area in both square inches and square centimeters. Well, if this is a rectangle, then we know that area is just uh, length times width. And in inches, this would be 8.5 inches times 11 inches. And if we multiply those together, we get 93.5 square inches. 93.5 inches squared. Because not only are the numbers multiplied together, the units are multiplied together as well. Well, let's say we converted each of these from each of these distances from inches to centimeters. Okay, so 8.5 inches. Well, we know that there is uh, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. We want the inches to cancel out. So we put that in the denominator, the 2.54 centimeters in the numerator. And that one gives 21.6, 21.6 centimeters. And for the width, the 11 inches, can do the same kind of unit conversion, 2.54 centimeters over one inch. So 11 times 2.54 gives uh, 27.9. And then this new area, well, if we have 21.6 centimeters times 27.9 centimeters, when we multiply those together, 21.6 times 27.9, we get 602.6 square centimeters. 
because again, the units get squared as well. But what if we wanted to just go from this area in square inches and directly do a unit conversion to area in square centimeters? Okay. Well, we have to be especially careful with this because let's say I'm introducing this conversion factor. Okay. We know that for every one inch, there's 2.54 centimeters. So if I do one inch over 2.54 centimeters, if I just left it at this, one of these units of inches are gonna cancel out, but then we're gonna be left with really weird units of inches times centimeters. So we're gonna get some value of inches times centimeters, which is not what we want. We want centimeters squared. So the way to fix this is this unit conversion, if this is inches squared, we have to do that inches to centimeters conversion two times. Okay. So we can write this out as 2.54 centimeters for every one inch. Or we could have just taken the original one and just said that original one needs to be squared. Okay. So the way you'd multiply this out is 93.5 times 2.54 squared. Be careful with order of operations on your calculator. Uh, make sure it's just the 2.54 being squared and not the 93.5 that gets squared. Um, and when we plug that in, we get around 603 uh, square centimeters, which within rounding is basically what we got uh, for this area over here. So you wanna make extra, be extra careful when you're converting something that has units that are squared in it. Again, areas would be square centimeters, volumes would be cubic centimeters. You want to be extra careful when making those kinds of unit conversions. Let's look at one more example. Let's say the density of gold is 11.17 ounces uh, per cubic inch. And we want to convert this to kilograms per cubic meter. So we know that from our list of common unit conversions, that one kilogram is the same as 35.3 ounces. And since in this original term, ounces is showing up in the numerator, we need to cancel that out by putting the 33, 35.3 ounces in the denominator. So that's equal to one kilogram. Converting the cubic inches to cubic meters, well, we know that one meter is the same as 39.4 inches. And since inches right now is in the denominator, we're gonna to need to put the inches in the numerator. So 39.4 inches over one meter. But again, we have to be extra careful because this isn't just inches that we're converting, it's cubic inches that we're converting. So this conversion factor, we have to apply that one three times. So you have to cube that last term. So when we look at the terms that are canceling out, ounces cancel out top and bottom, and cubic inches cancel out with what uh, uh, the cubic inches that we'll get from that term. Okay. So the way to actually multiply this out, we're gonna do 11.17 divided by 35.3, okay, get a result for that, and then multiply that by 39.4 cubed. Okay. Make sure you're just cubing the 39.4. Again, be careful with order of operations on here. And the result that I get for that is 19,000, uh, around 19,400 kilograms per cubic meter. Again, gold is fairly high density. So these methods of doing different kinds of unit conversions, this can be applied to basically any kind of unit conversion. As long as you have some list of, you know, different kinds of unit conversions for common things like distances, masses, you can pretty much use this to convert any kind of quantity. And when working on problems, I really strongly suggest to my students that you start by looking at what quantities are given and if any of them are given in non-standard metric units, that is distances that are not in meters, times that are not in seconds, masses that are not in kilograms, I strongly recommend at the beginning of the question, do those conversions right away because a lot of physics equations will be assuming that you're using kind of those base SI units. Again, distances in meters, times in seconds, masses in kilograms or things derived from there. So we'll call that one good. 
Uh, in case you want a little bit of practice yourself, I've got a couple of examples that are listed up here right now. You can pause the video and have a, have a go at those. And I'll put numerical solutions to those in the description. And we'll call that good for this video. Thank you for watching.